What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the podcast. One of the things we talk a lot about around the the channels is uh, skill acquisition and how if you want to change your life, it really starts with changing your skills. Primarily for me, like early in my journey, it was about learning skills that I could translate into money because money was the source of all, almost all my, well, it wasn't the source of all my issues, but it's the source of a lot of them. And uh, I couldn't really start to work on solving the other issues in my life until I had, you know, my basic food, my shelter, those needs filled. And so I needed to go make money. And at, the, at, that, at that point in my journey, I really, I had no clue, one, what skills to go get, two, how to go get them. And so I went about it in a really willy-nilly fashion. Um, and it, there was no methodical approach. Like... I think it's very really easy to see somebody's, um, you know, chapter 50 and compare it to your chapter one. And so you might be tempted uh, to look at me and what I've accomplished and say, oh, he went through it in this very logical, structured, intentional way. And because that's how I talk about it now, I look backwards and I can connect dots and I can create frameworks and structures and say, okay, here's actually what worked and what happened there. But at the time, as I'm going through it, it's way, it's way more chaotic. It's, there's way less like intentionality in the moment for me, at least on my journey, um, than what I, than what I give it when I tell the stories in a way that hopefully brings you value that you can apply to your own life. So that's number one is just to realize like, um, I'm, I'm, I'm creating, this is revisionist history. And that's really what all entrepreneurs are doing. We're looking back at what we did and we're saying, here's what we did, I think, um, and trying to create a cohesive narrative. And the reality is when you're in the moment, it's going to look a whole lot less intentional and it's going to be very fluid. But if you want to take that structure and say, okay, I need to go out there and acquire skills and I need to apply those skills and deliver value to the marketplace in exchange for money. What are those skills that I need to go acquire? Well, I was thinking about this and if I was in my you know mid twenties, actually it doesn't really matter what age you are. If you're looking to acquire some like money making skills in the current con economy, these are three skills that I think are uh, not maybe perhaps timeless, but the underlying skills that will be required to do these at a high level are pretty timeless and they'll serve you regardless of what you decide to do in the future. But these are a great way to get yourself into the game, learn very high value skills and start making a bit of money. So these are three skills I would recommend that you consider uh, if you're just starting off on your journey and you're like, I don't know what to do. Number one is learn email automations. Learn how to the different CRMs, learn how to set up welcome emails, how to set up drip email campaigns, all of that stuff. And the reason I'm a big fan of this is because more and more we're seeing creators, solopreneurs, we're seeing businesses understand the value of offboarding their audience away from the social media platform and putting them into a medium that they control and own, which is the email list. So this email list is actually the lifeblood of a lot of like of, of healthy companies. This is your, your customer list. And in a very real way, the the healthier more robust your your email list is like the healthier or more robust your business is going to be and so this is becoming an ever increasing need it's so critically important and yet a lot of people a lot of businesses don't understand how to to, to set this up in a way where they can help bring in new leads turn them and nurture them into to, to paying customers down the road and so you can step in and you can help all sorts of businesses and entrepreneurs if you know how to help set up email automations so that when somebody comes in they get the lead magnet now they're getting their onboarding email and it's nurturing and it's it's moving that that um, that lead to get ever warmer and ideally get to the place where they're willing to give you money in exchange for your service and your product right and so the sub skills of learning email automations is one, you're going to learn the technology side of the different CRMs Two, you're going to learn the psychology of marketing and advertising and what kind of messages to be sending at which points three, you're going to learn storytelling within the email so that you can craft compelling narratives that actually inspire, engage and make an impact. And then four, you're going to learn how to write. You're going to learn how to take that story and take the psychology and apply it through the written word to get people to take action, which is, you know, copywriting. So those are a couple of sub skills within just email automations that you'll learn along the way. And each one of those things could, could be priceless in, in its own application if you figure out, you know, a unique way to do that. But 
I would that that's one that I would personally start with email automations. I know the the value of that from my own businesses, and I know that that's an easy one to start with. The next one that I would start I would think about is website or funnel design. And again, this is like one step up. Automation is kind of like the once the the website funnel that whole process has gotten people into the system, like what to do with them from there. But we have to figure out also how to get people from just being a cold lead to an actual person on the email list, right? And there's a lot that goes into this from web design to coding to um, the, the actual psychology of what are we what are we putting where, right? Why do we have the button here? Why do we put the headline there? How do we structure this from a copywriting perspective? Like there's a lot of sub skills that go into web design and funnel design. And again, in the same way that you'll learn all those sub skills in email automation, this is just another application of it. And, and if you got really good at all of this stuff, you could become like a one-stop shop, um, one-stop marketing shop for small businesses to come in and say, I'll help you with your website design, help you set up your funnel, then help you take it all the way through to the email automations, to your email list, to figure out how to take those relationships, nurture them and convert them. That's a very, very valuable thing. The, the third skill, or third way that you could pursue making money is graphic design. And I, I think even with uh, ChatGPT and Midjourney and all of these like AI solutions that can create um, great graphics for you, I still think design is timeless and there's always a need for designers. Just, again, like the sub skills that go into this is like the biggest one is human psychology because design is really good design. It depends on the human perceiving the design. And so to create a good design, you have to understand what humans consider to be good design. And I think anytime that you can, you can learn a skill revolving around human psychology, I lean deep into that because psychology is the one macro skill that I have found serves me in all avenues of my business and just my life in general, because everything we do is, is in relation to other humans when it comes to business, right? Without other humans to service, then there is no need for a business. And so psychology is like that, that foundational skill that underlies everything. And whether you're doing design, you're doing web design, you're doing funnel design, you're doing email automation design, like understanding human psychology, human biases, cognitive biases, like these, these are very important, timeless principles that are gonna serve you well in all areas of your life. So those are just three ideas. Um, if you're looking for some inspiration of like what you might go and pursue, um, maybe start with one of those. So hope this brings you guys some value as always really psyched that you, that you're here. Um, it means a lot to me, truly. Uh, I'll catch you in the next episode, but until then stay hyper-focused, my friends.